Welcome, fellow explorers, to Discovering Gray's Lake Podcast. My name is David Wool, and I'm your guide on this journey through the hidden gems and untold stories of our beloved Gray's Lake. Whether you're a longtime resident or just passing through, this podcast is your passport to the heart and soul of our community. Together, we'll uncover history, celebrate the present, and dream about the future of Gray's Lake. I'm doing my best to leave no stone unturned in our quest to discover what makes our town so truly special. Get ready for interviews with local legends, fascinating insights of our town's past with a sprinkle of the unexpected. I invite you to join me every week as we embark on this adventure together. This is the Discovering Grays Lake Podcast. A quick word from our sponsors and on to the show. It's time to unleash your style with custom shirts. Explore endless possibilities with Jammin' Tees. Jammin' Tees. Jammin tees. Whether it's for school, Jammin business, team, or events, Jammin' Tees. Jammin' Tees. Jammin' Tees. Has you covered, literally, for all your custom apparel needs. Jammin tea, jammin tea, jammin tea, jammin tea. Hey there, Grays Lake. Looking for a good time right in the heart of our awesome community? Well, look no further than the Grays Lake Village Center, your one-stop destinations for all things fun and fabulous. Picture this. Historic downtown vibes with a mix of diverse businesses, shopping galore, and restaurants that'll make your taste buds dance. But that's not all. The Village Center is where the action is, with events happening year-round for the whole family. Take a stroll through Central Park, Gelatin Park, surrounded by trails, green spaces, and more activities than you can shake a sledding hill at. And when the weather warms up, dive into the Grays Lake Aquatic Center for some splash-tastic fun. But wait, there is more. Visit GraysLakeVillageCenter.com to discover the incredible lineup of events happening every month. Want the 411 delivered straight to your inbox? Sign up for the Grays Lake Village Center digital newsletter on the website or check out their Facebook page for the latest happenings. Be in the know. Not sure what you're waiting for? Come on down, soak in the local vibes, and enjoy the experience that's unmistakably Grays Lake. Grays Lake Village Center, where the fun never stops. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Discovering Gray's Lake. I am um, recording here on the corner of Center Street and Atkinson with one of my favorite sponsors, um, Luke, over here at Agora. So if you're looking for any kind of space outside your home to work in, you get an office just to get out of the house or have a meeting at, Agora is a great choice. Uh, and Luke's just a great guy, um, and he, he helps us out with everything. So um, the gentleman I have sitting in front of me is the only man that I haven't talked to personally because his wonderful... Gal has set up everything, so I walk in and I actually get to meet Dr. Selke for the first time. How are you, sir? I'm great. I'm I, great. I, I guess I should say doctor, not sir. Oh, you know what? Terry's fine too. Terry. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll just we'll just go with Terry. Okay. Okay. So, um, thank you so much for being here. Um, I, we were we were having a conversation offline because, as most people know, that I've DJed like everything for the Grace Lake Park District for everything in the community, and and there's nowhere we can go without formally hearing you know Dr. Selke and Raleigh to orthodontic specialists of Lake County. And I'm not happy with the word orthodontic, so it's not the easiest thing to say. Okay. Um, so we're here to learn about you. Um, first of all, because uh, so many people in town know you, I would love to, to share some of your history with them on how do, how do we get here today um, in Grays Lake? First of all, how do you get to be an orthodontist? Okay. To get to be an orthodontist today requires... An undergraduate education, bachelor's degree, which is minimum three years, usually four. And then dental school, which is four more years. And then orthodontic school, there's three more years after that. So that's the, you know, college level education required to be an orthodontist today. That's incredible. Now, I, I've also seen online that you're not proud of where you went to school. <laughs> oh, but, oh, no, that, that's not true. I'm, I'm, I, I'm Illinois true and blue. Uh, I went to Illinois for undergraduate. I went to Illinois for my orthodontic training and degree. I went to Illinois for my graduate degree, my master's degree, my master's degree in business. I taught at University of Illinois 36 years as co-director of clinics. And upon retirement from that position, I still am actively involved in doing uh, clinical research. In fact, our office right now is involved in six different clinical research studies on orthodontics. So, yeah, I'm an Illinois man. Oh my gosh, I'm exhausted listening to hear how much school that you had to go through and the continued the continued work you do. Like, you're still on this. I am. I love it. I, you know, I'm. There aren't many people in the world who can say that they love going to work, but here I am. 
you know, after all these years, decades in practice, and I still love going to work. Uh, all of my classmates in ortho school retired long ago. I can't see myself retiring. I like too much what I do. Right. Um, so how long are you going to work then? I don't know. You know, it's, that depends on what God gives me. As long as I have my health right. and I'm able to do what I love to do, I'm around. Wow. Um, I, I, I love stuff like this. So, so things, since you've become an orthodontist, do you have any idea how many patients you've seen? 50,000. <laughs> 50,000. Yes. That is insane. Um, and I, I know most people listening, they hate, they hate to go to the dentist. You know, they, they dread when their children have to go to the ortho. Um, but it seems like the reputation that you have from the way that you're, you have ran your business, um, it's an extremely pleasant experience for, for 50,000 people coming to see you. Well, that was the objective. You know, my goal has always been not just making you know, new, beautiful smiles and changing people's lives in that way. And in fact, that's how I got into the profession of orthodontics is changing people's lives in a positive way. But the best way to do it is to create an environment where everyone that walks in the door has a good experience. And I'm talking about patients, but I'm also talking about my staff. I have great, wonderful staff, long-term staff that have been with me for years. And, you know, when I'm surrounded by happy people who enjoy the experience, that's why I still love what I do. That's incredible. That's incredible. And, you know, some people dread going to work, but they say you'll never work a day in your life if you love what you do, right? Yep. That's I'm true. sure some days for you have been work. Over 50,000. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not even a whole day uh, because it, it could be, you know, the, the, I may be overbooked at one hour of a day, you know, that kind of thing, which makes us run behind, which is, you know, I pride myself in the fact that we, when we tell patients your appointments at two, we get them in at two, not at three thirty, you know, right. that kind of thing. So we do have those glitches, but they're few and far between. And that also is why I enjoy going to work. Right. No, and, and having a great staff. Like you, we, were, we were talking about a little Fantastic. bit about longevity of your staff is, is amazing. Yes. So that says more about I don't know, a place of business run than, than anything. Well, you know, a statistic for the orthodontic world is if you have an employee who stays with you longer than 18 months, you have done something right because the turnover is greater than that. And I am proud to say because we've been lucky in, in having the right people and creating the right environment that uh, 15 of my staff have been with me more than 15 years. That's unbelievable. It's a, it, That's what makes going work fun. That's great. And especially if everybody likes everybody, you yeah. know, it's, it's a, a oh, good yeah. place to work brings the, brings a better experience for the client as well. For sure. All right. So Terry's a little boy and he's sitting around. <laughs> At, at what point did you say, did you, did you always want to be a dentist or what did, what did you want to be when you grew up? Like what, what was the pivotal moment to say, this is what I'm doing? Good question. I thought I was going to be a fireman. Okay. That was where I was going <clears throat> as a kid. And <laughs> when I was a little kid, I had the worst buck teeth you ever saw. My <laughs> teeth were awful. And I was constantly getting into fights because, you know, people would make fun of me because of my teeth. And I never backed down from anything, so I punched the guy in the face, and he'd punch me back. And my dad finally made the decision when I was 14 years old, let's take you to an orthodontist because I'm tired of paying the doctor bills for your black eye and this and that, okay? <laughs> and that that's really how it began. And so the orthodontist I happened to work go to when I was 14 was looking for a lab boy who would make retainers and trim models and things like that. And I just happened to be in the chair when this moment arrived, and I said, I want to be your lab boy. And I worked for him for three years in high school and said, this is what I want to do. Because I had the opportunity to see before and after photos and models of treated patients. And that combined with what I saw it did for me in my life, all the positive things it did for me in my life, I said, this is what I want to do. That's awesome. Isn't it funny, like, just the, uh, we always talk about, like, thin threads in your life of things that happen that, that change your whole life and guide it to where, you know, I'm sure you can't imagine being anything else after doing this for that long. Nope. Not at all. Wow. 
Um, okay, so let's give some let's give some advice to parents because I have a couple of questions. Um, okay. Um, when they notice their you know their their kids' teeth if they're not like when is the age that they go to an orthodontist if they identify that you know because children have a lot of kids are mean and they get made fun of like you got made fun of yep um and you need to change that direction so how old what is the age that they need to start looking into that well the the american association of orthodontists their their official position is every child should see an orthodontist by age eight okay now that doesn't mean everyone gets treated by eight we see a lot of you know seven, eight, nine, ten-year-olds that I will not do treatment on because there is no need. There's only two things we will treat at a young age. One is a crossbite, where what that basically means is when a child puts their teeth together, there's one or more upper teeth that fits inside the lower. That's crossbite. The reason we treat crossbites is because that tooth is so out of place, if a patient bites wrong, they can break a tooth. And it doesn't look very good either. No, I'm sure not. The other, only other thing that we'll treat at a young age is a skeletal problem, where let's say there's not only a malocclusion, but the bones that hold the teeth are the cause. You know, the upper and lower jaws are not matching. Those are things that you must correct at a young age, because if you don't, they're going to be a surgical case. So that's what we treat at a young age. Otherwise, we treat patients, you know, in their teens, you know, we call it, late mixed dentition. When they're losing the last of their baby teeth, that is usually the ideal age to start. Wow. That, that's So is it ever too late? Like if I have a 16-year-old or 17-year-old that, that need braces now, it's not too late to do it. No, it's not too late. In fact, I would say easily 30% of our practice today is patients over 30. So there, it's never too late. My oldest patient was 82 degree, 82 years old. Okay. Really? So <laughs> it's never too late to move teeth. However, what we need to keep saying to the community is growth is an important factor in correct, you know, correction of a malocclusion. Mm -hmm. And for females, growth is essentially over facial growth at 16. Males, maybe 17. So if I don't see someone before that age and there is something where I need, you know, growth orientation to produce the best result, it's too late. Gotcha. Okay. So this is funny. So I have a 19 year old, a 16 year old and a seven year old. When, when I was growing up, and I'm 51 years old, if people <laughs> had braces, it was like a stigma. Like, oh my gosh, they have braces. Like it was weird. But somewhere on the line, I don't know if this is your voodoo magic or whatever has happened, but all of my kids have asked for braces because there's something that has changed in the, the perception of it that they think is cool. Right. What is that? How does well, that I happen? Think it's a status symbol thing. You know, all your classmates have it. And, and, you know, you ask them, why did you get braces? Well, my teeth were crooked or whatever their answer might be. And, and it's like, gee whiz, you know. I want braces too, like all my classmates. And that's kind of a change in mindset. Wow. Hello, Grazed Lake. It's Randy Cashmore with Cashmore Financial Group. It's no secret that I love our village. And a big reason for that is my membership with the Grazed Lake Chamber of Commerce. If you haven't taken a look at the Grazed Lake Chamber lately, you should. We're a wonderful group of business people creating a positive difference in the village we call home. Reach out and get involved today. You'll be glad you did. It's just it was it was funny to me the first time I heard it because the first thing I thought was how much does that cost? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's and that's, valid. Can we have a less expensive hobby than having braces? Yep. Um, but it's funny. But there's been a lot of there's been a lot of changes since you've been in 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 practice. Huge. Yeah. What Huge. Do you, what do you think some of the biggest ones are that we have to offer today to people that we didn't maybe even 20 years ago? I think uh, I lecture worldwide on. Uh, changes in orthodontics, transitional things, we call them disruptors, uh, paradigm shifts. There's two today that I lecture on worldwide. One is called dental monitoring, which is remote monitoring of treatment uh, using AI and your phone. Okay. The other is clear aligners. You know, up until clear aligners came around in 1999. And before that, if you wanted straight teeth, you got braces. There was no other option. Right. But 1999 was the evolution of using plastic to move teeth that's removable. And so those two things are probably the biggest disruptors of my career. Uh, 
but when you put them together, what I can offer patients is aesthetics, the clear aligners. I can offer them force levels that are a fraction of what they were 20 years ago so the teeth don't get sore. I can offer them treatment that is better and faster. And with dental monitoring, which allows me to remotely monitor treatment using AI weekly, I sometimes don't see a patient for 20 weeks because I don't need to see them in the office until when I'm looking at them remotely, there's something I need to do in the office. So for them, it's a convenience factor. Far fewer visits, less time out of school, less mom taking off work to pick up the kid. You know, all of those things, those are the two biggest disruptors, period. Wow. Yeah, I was watching a little video on your um, on your Facebook. So if, if if you're not following, then make sure to go follow on Facebook because um, there's some really good videos, and you guys had a YouTube channel that I watched some videos on there. But the AI, you, well, there's an app that goes with it, so they send in their photos. An app they download on their phone, uh-huh. and then the app kind of walks them through how to do a video. The app is actually recording the video using the phone, obviously, the right. camera on the phone. And the, the video goes directly to dental monitoring. And what they do with AI is they program what is a video into still shots that then are the, the traditional orthodontic set of photographs. Yeah. But the interesting thing is they keep the video too. So what, what evolves over the course of treatment is I can push a button and I can watch a video of the teeth going from where they used to be to where they are today. And Patients who have the app can do the same thing. They can see all the same things I see. Okay. So, young Terry, you're telling this story, too, like a back to the future moment. Would you ever have believed that it was going to, like, that's, that's, that's insane. No, I, I, I totally agree. I'll, I'll tell you how I got involved with that. Yeah, Roger. please. You, you'll find this story interesting. Yeah. I always go to our annual orthodontic meeting, the American Association of Orthodontics, and I was in, in 2016... I was at the AAO meeting, and a, a colleague of mine says, what do you know about dental monitoring? I said, I have no idea what that is. What is it? He says, well, let's go over to their booth and talk. Went over to their booth. There were only two people in the booth, the owner of the company who developed the AI system and an orthodontist who was you know, bringing in and talking ortho language. Okay. Right. And so I said, okay, t- you know, give me your elevator speech. Tell me what is dental monitoring. And he started talking. And I said, that's bullshit. You can't do it. Right. He goes, yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. That discussion went on for half an hour. And by the time we were through, there were probably 200 orthodontists listening to the two of us going at it. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. And he said, tell you what, I want to prove what I'm talking about. Our company is centered in Paris. I want you to fly to Paris spend a couple days with me and we'll talk about it. Okay. So two weeks later I was in Paris. He showed me how it worked, how the uh, artificial intelligence works, how humans are monitoring the AI to make sure it's accurate and so forth. And I came home from Paris and I said, I have seen the future. I said to my staff, we had a staff meeting, the entire staff there. This is now August of 2016. I said, Everything we've done in the past is gone. We're, we're starting over. We're going to use dental monitoring on every patient in the practice. And, and I gave the reasons, the benefits to the patient and so forth. And they said, oh, here we go again. Because every time he goes to a meeting, he comes back with something that he wants to change right. in an effort to improve. Right. <laughs> That's great. But I got involved in 2016. I was the first orthodontist in the United States to use it. Really? Yeah. That's cool. And now there's there. thousands now. Right. Um, is there anybody else around here using that kind of stuff? No. Wow. No. Grays Lake, are you ready for some nonstop fun with the Grays Lake Park District? Hundreds of classes, programs, community events, all designed to keep those smiles shiny. Explore over 240 acres of parks, each a playground of excitement. Safety is their priority, ensuring a good time for all ages. From kids to the young at heart, the Grace Lake Park District has something for everyone. Grab your seasonal program guide for memories that will last a lifetime. Your adventure begins with the Grace Lake Park District, where fun knows no limits. That's cool. I like, I, when I first watched the video first, I'm a big techie AI like 
looking for the good things that they can do. Um, I, I admire you for, for, well, you obviously teach. Um, so you're, you're obviously looking for the next best thing and a, and a better way to help your patients, but it sounds like it makes it more efficient. It makes it cost effective. Um, and you have a better way to monitor patients when you need to see them right away. They can take a video and you can see it right I can, away. I can catch problems before they become chronic. And that's, that's really, really, really important. Wow. So you're still, you're not done learning. You're, 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 no. you're absorbing everything you can. Yeah. Um, and, and folks, let me tell you too, that I know that we're here and your, your stories are fascinating, but I'm going to tell you the real reason that you're here today, because this is a Gray's Lake podcast. Um, and the reason we do this to build community, to help community, to bring everybody together, um, and throughout everything, um, because I see what you're involved with and what you give back to our community is the reason that you're sitting here today and the reason that everybody knows your name and they hope I want to make sure that everybody knows what you do giving back to the community, even park district events. Even if we started a park district events, like I, from family bingo night, the taste of craze, like the Easter egg hunts, the ch children's performance in the park, pumpkin fest. Um, you've seen Doc's name on, on T-ball. Um, you can't go to, can't go to a sporting event around here without seeing your name on everything for summer and fall. Um, soccer, basketball. I'm going to add another one to the list I have here too. Uh, the, um, we did the summer kickoff dance down at Jones Island and see all the kids around there, but without sponsors like you to make those things happen, it's wonderful. You also do a ton of work with the chamber as well, right? Yes. Um, and with schools, clubs, sports, like I, I, I had to, I had to print off a list here. I don't know. I think we've had a guest where I need a one page list, um, to read off everybody from Woodview, Meadowview, Prairie View. Um, Westlake, St. Gilbert, the, the Colts, um, the soccer clubs, and youth baseball. Um, you're, you're involved in everything, so you obviously have a love for this town. Well, you know, I feel like the luckiest man in the world. You know, I, I do what I do, and I enjoy going to work every day. I'm surrounded by people who want to be there. And when you're that fortunate, you have to give back. And I've always wanted to give back to the community that has supported me. So that's an easy call. Well, from being a father of people that have had ever involved in all of this, I, I personally thank you because we see people that are involved in maybe one event. Um, but even with the chamber, you're at summer days, you're at the art festival, um, the family fun run, <clears throat> um, and the summer night street dance and the chamber golf outing. So. You're, you're touching people's lives by, by giving back to the community that's given to you. So it's a big thing because you don't have to. No, but I love it. Yeah. And how long have you been involved in some of these programs? <laughs> Over 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. And <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to go off the rails here, even though you maybe were instructed not to say these things. Um, but I think it's fascinating how long you've been doing this. Um, I recently had eye surgery, and they had a choice between the young doctor and an older doctor. I'm taking the older doctor. I'm, I'm taking the older doctor that uses AI every day of the week. <laughs> Just so you know. Well, thank you. Yes. Thank you. So you've been in business for over 40 years. I have. And you know what? The day you stop learning is the day you should retire. Right. And I really believe that. So you should be retired. You should be sitting on the beach in Florida right now somewhere. Well, you know what? I still love what I do. Right. So why sit on a beach? I've adjusted my hours so that I have the time to go to the beach and so forth. Right. You know, my, my wife and I get to do vacations, you know, I would say what pretty close to a week, a month we go on vacation, but the rest of the time I'm working and I love it. That's great. Yep. That's great. And it's good to have someone you like that, that actually, I want, I, I don't know about you guys listening, but I'm going to go to the doctor that wants to work. <laughs> not, not the one that's just trying to buy the time to get done. Um, so I, I do have, <clears throat> One thing, because I know that you're a busy man and you um, have not been able to uh, maybe listen to a podcast. So what we're going to do here is do a thing called the Gray's Lake Hot Seat. Okay. It's time for the Gray's Lake Hot Seat. <laughs> the Gray's Lake Hot Seat today is brought to you by Premier Chiropractic. Dr. John, conveniently located in historical downtown Gray's Lake. Premier Chiropractic offers you a full range of chiropractic care. John is dedicated to treating people within our community and showing them the benefit of great, convenient, affordable chiropractic care. So if you're looking to get straightened down, go see Dr. John at Premier Chiropractic. Now for the Grizzly Hot Seat.
All right, so what we do in the Grays Lake Hot Seat is I'm going to ask you some rapid-fire questions. Just get to know you but you a little bit better. Some of these are, uh, well, you'll understand it goes on, but nothing inappropriate. Okay. As far as you know. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm very interested to hear some of your answers. So this is getting to know Terry a little bit better. Um, okay, so um, if you had to have a superpower, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? A superpower. Grant the world peace. Excellent answer. Tell me a place that you'd like to travel, because I know you've done some traveling, that you have not been, that you really want to go to. Hmm. Well, I've been to seven continents, so I've been around a lot. But I'll tell you a place that I love going back to. I've been there only twice, but we'll go back again, believe it or not, South Africa, the to see the live animals in their habitat. You know, you're you're in the back of a Range Rover, uh and you know you're there's no canopy there's no protection and you know i could reach out the window of the range rover and pet a lion i mean you're not going to do that because you'll take your arm off but <laughs> right. that was the most scary but fascinating experience i ever had and i would tell anybody who's ever thinking about that please do it and do it soon because unfortunately the poachers are taking all the animals Anyone with ten thousand dollars can go and kill themselves a lion, a rhino, an elephant, and the animals are disappearing. That's terribly sad. Yes, that's terribly sad. Wow, what a, what a cool experience for you to do. Yeah, that's 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 really awesome. I'm going to skip ahead to a question then. So, if you had to be an animal of any course, what would you be? What would Terry be? Oh, what would I be? Especially after seeing those guys up close. I don't know if that changes My staff you. would call me a lion. Okay, I'm, I'm sure of that. What but, would your uh, wife call you? What would my wife call me? <laughs> Probably a lion, too. Okay. Uh, what would I want to be if I could be an animal? A dog. A dog? Yeah, because okay. everybody loves dogs, right? right? And dogs are always happy to see you, too. Yep. <laughs> That's good. And they get treated better than everybody sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um you look back and do you have a favorite TV show that you had growing up? Yes, I did. Uh, I loved, first of all, uh, Ozzy and Harriet. I loved, you're going to laugh at this one. <laughs> one of my favorite shows ever was the Dean Martin Comedy Hour because he just, it, it was all ad lib. There was no script. He was just Dean Martin being Dean Martin. And every time I saw it, it was funny. And then the only other one I would say is Johnny Carson. You know, he, he, it, there will never be a late night show host like him again. No, oh. no. Um, I actually watched some of those things back and the Dean Martin comedy hours I have on VHS tapes, um, <laughs> sitting back places that, um, that's amazing to, you know, look back and how funny and how oh, right yeah. off the, just witty and fast yeah. and yeah. everything. It was great. Um, um, <clears throat> who's the funniest person that you know? Hmm. As someone who's alive or someone in the entertainment industry? Yeah, some, somebody that you know. Funny. Like personally. Someone I know you personally. It's a hard one, I know. It is a hard one. <laughs> My brother. All right. Must have served for an interesting childhood if your brother's the oh, yes. uh, funniest oh, yeah. guy you know. Yeah. Tell me about your first car you ever owned. Oh, that's an easy one. Volkswagen Beetle. A Beetle was your first car? Yep. That's good. What color was it? It was uh, beige. Yeah, they they did awesome with colors back in yeah. <laughs> Um If you had to write a book, what would it be about? I would write a book about how to get people to get along, because that's something our country needs right now. Amen. Um, if now this this one might be hard. If you had to take a job in a different field, if you had to go back and change the way you did things, you have to. You can't say no. I would do nothing else. What kind of job or what field would you be in if it wasn't orthodox? I'd be a fireman. I'd be a fireman. <laughs> um, would the twelve-year-old version of yourself think you're cool? I think so. I think they would be too. Do you have a nickname? You have to have a nickname. <laughs> My wife calls me Butthead. <laughs> okay i've not heard anything like that on the show before oh there you go um she sounds like a lovely woman she sounds like she keeps you in line um what do you wish um that you would have learned sooner in life business business what aspect of the business 
Well, here's the deal. You know, we go through all these years of professional school and they teach you how to, let's say, be a good doctor, mm -hmm. but they don't teach you shit on being a good businessman. And to run a business in healthcare, you have to know more than just being a good doctor. And with no training in that, it's hard. That's why I went back to college and got a master's degree in business because I didn't know and I was struggling. And I wanted to figure out how to do it and do it right. Mm -hmm. So that would be it. Interesting. I never would think about that, but you're absolutely right. Um, you'd be the best doctor in the world, but if you have zero business sense or anything, you're not going to have the patience. You're not going to be able to flourish and, and, and go on. Um, this one's great. Um, and, and I hate it as well. Um, have you ever ate a roller dog from a gas station on a road trip? Any of the, the roller no. things at the gas station? Good. I've eaten a lot of them. So, um, what is your middle name? Alan. Alan. Um, if you had to have a theme party at your house, what kind of theme party would you throw? Okay. <laughs> we actually had one of these. Okay. It was an Elton John theme party. I happened to love Elton John. And everybody came dressed as Elton John. We played the music. We played the videos. How fun. Yeah. How fun. Have you ever seen Elton in concert? Yeah. How many times? Three times. Three times. Um, recently or like what? Like no, when back when he was playing at uh, at Caesar's Palace in, in uh, Las Vegas. Awesome. So cool. Um, from one to ten, how good of a driver are you? I think I'm a nine. All right. That we can park next to each other in the parking lot. Then. Um, did you play a sport in high school or? or... I, I played football. Okay. I played baseball badly, and that's it. Um, Actually, I played basketball. You played basketball? Yeah. Which was your favorite? It seems like basketball. Basketball was my favorite. Yeah. You had a kind of twinkle in your eye when you said basketball, yeah. which was fun. That's the only one I carried into college. I actually played basketball in college. You played basketball at U of I? Not at U of I. I played on a, in a mural team. I played on a fraternity so team. And we won the Big Ten Championship. That's the interview. That's awesome, yeah. though. People don't understand, but that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Yeah. And how fun. Yeah. And what a way to have camaraderie with your with your guys too. Yeah. Um, this is a very serious one. Um, from one, um, being the, the least likely and 10 being the most likely, uh, what's the chance that Bigfoot exists? This is a very important question. I'm going to say used to exist, probably a 10 exists now, a three. All right. That's the best answer I've had. I'm a Bigfoot fanatic. So I like to hear people <laughs> like, um, interesting. What is your favorite, this is going to be a hard one though, what's your favorite Grays Lake event to go to go to yourself? Not one that you, that you sponsor, but to actually to be at. I think the parades. The parades. Yeah. Yeah. The parades, the parades are great. Yeah, they're fun. They are cool. And that is one of my favorite ways to watch community come together. It's like that hometown feel of seeing people, you know, rolling up their lawn chairs with their kids and they have their little wagons out there and saving their spot so they can, you know. And our world has changed a lot from those, but that is a really cool way to to just take in the community and see how many people you know out there. Yeah. Which you probably know most of them. Um, all right. If me and you were going to have a beer tonight and we're going to go watch football, um, where would we go in Gray's Lake to go hang out? I would have to say the Vine. Vine? Excellent. Um, now I'm throwing you under the bus. Um, what is your favorite podcast episode of mine that you've listened to? Well, I'm gonna, uh, now I get to throw you under the bus. Okay. I, I haven't heard any of them. <laughs> my bad. <clears throat> okay. But my staff does. Oh, good. So everybody in the staff does. But Excellent. I'm between working and lecturing and, and working on research, I, my, my days are full, and I love it that way. <clears throat> exactly. And if you not have an hour to do extra stuff in your life and just not listening to me and somebody else. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so, okay. Don't take it personal. No, no, not at all. Um, so if, <clears throat> if you were to scroll, scroll down on a podcast platform and saw Gray's Lake area podcast, whose name would you like to see on there? Is there somebody in our community that you would say, oh my God, I'd love to hear their story. Unfortunately, you'll never do a podcast with this person because he passed away. But one of my favorite people ever, ever in Gray's Lake was Dr. Al Stefano, who's a dentist. Phenomenal person. 
what a wonderful man he was. Dr. D. Yep. I went to Dr. D growing up. Yeah. Growing up. I could still imagine walking in the office over there. Yeah. Yeah. So he was a good friend of yours? Great. Awesome. Um, how did you meet Dr. D? He's the reason I'm a Grays Lake. Oh, tell me that story. <laughs> okay. I'd love to hear that. I opened my first office actually in Zion, Illinois. Okay. Okay. And I was struggling. You know, I had no business background or anything else struggling. And all of a sudden, one day, the phone rings, and it's Al Stefano on the phone. Al says, I want to take you to lunch. I said, okay. So we go to lunch. And he says, what do you think about having an office in Grays Lake? And I'm going, geez, I hardly paid my bills in Zion. You know, how am I going to do an office in Grays Lake? And he <laughs> goes, we have 600 square feet in our building that we're not using, I want you to come there and be the orthodontist for Grace Lake. At that time, there were no orthodontists. In fact, Al and Michael Laporte were the only two dentists. Okay. Yeah. So I said, okay. And borrowed the money to, you know, build out the 600 square feet. And we had a grand opening, which we invited the Grace Lake band to play at, which was funny because, you know, I mean, the <laughs> high school band played right. at. And we had a bar and we invited the whole town. Okay. The whole town. And at that grand opening, Al Stefano comes to me and he hands me a legal pad. And I go, what's this? And he says, these are your first patients. They've been waiting for you. And on the legal pad were 50 names. Holy cow. And at that time, Grays Lake was like 1,500 people. You know, right. it's a very big town. Right. And so I jump started the Grays Lake office thanks to Al and Mike Laporta. And within six months, the Grays Lake office was bigger than the Zion office, and I closed the Zion office. Wow. So that's my story. Wow. So that one phone call and going to one lunch phone and, call. And, yeah. and everything changes. Yeah. Um, and that office, that was located, it's on? Center Street. It's on Center Street. Yeah. So that's where you started. Yep. Is that with with those guys? Yep. What a great group of guys to get involved with right away, oh, huh? They were they were they were both fantastic. Good dentists, both of them, but they you know, I am where I am today because of them. Right. And anybody my age listening to this, we all were there. Yeah. Like everybody everybody would know and even though it was only fifteen hundred and, and growing at that yeah. time. Um okay, we're gonna finish this because you've sparked a bunch of other other questions for me, <laughs> by the way. Um Um so if you had a uh, a friend come in from out of town that's never been to Grace Lake, yeah. um, and they're coming in, what would be the first place you'd take them or the first thing you'd show them about our town? Well, I would hope they would come at Christmas time because what they do for decorations at Christmas is phenomenal. Okay, as far as a place to go to eat, I would take them to Emos, I'd take them to the Vine, I'd take them to the the steak restaurant. Uh, that would be where we would eat, but I would want them to get a feel for the town of how relaxed it is, how countryish. It's not, you know, big city. It's like it's laid back. It's country. It's it's you know. I I want would want them to get a feel for that. Yeah, and with the Christmas lights downtown, it's oh, it's amazing. It, yeah, just anybody. they did lights in front of my building and on Center Street. It's not even downtown. I like who did that? Where did these come from? <laughs> And if people don't know where you're located, where are you guys at right now? We're at the corner of Center Street and Slusser. And so Slusser. a block from downtown. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, you can just you don't even need a car to do anything down there. You can That's walk right. in uh you're in the, the center of our village. And we do. Um but, which is great. Very very convenient for for that. Um okay. Um so there's a bunch in here. I'm just skip over because there's other things I want to talk to you about. Uh do you have a favorite late night snack? Ruffles, <laughs> ruffles. Any dip or just the straight well, classic ruffles? Just the, fr- just the salt is all I want. <laughs> that is funny. And I think you you've mentioned this, but what is where is your favorite place to vacation? My favorite place to vacation, period, is the Caribbean. Okay, and that's where I go. I probably go to the Caribbean five weeks a year, and right. you know it's always in the winter. You know I want to get away from this. I go someplace where it's warm and sunny and, and then come back to this. Nice. Now, you, you, you speak highly about your wife. How long have you been married? Okay. My current wife has been married three years. Okay. The one who gave me the name of Butthead, we were married 28 years. Oh, I see that. She passed away. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, 
So lovely, lovely wife. You've been with three years, and you guys get to enjoy, yeah, you know, all kinds of things together. Yes. Wow. Um. So we talk about all these Grace Lake things, and and I see the way that you light up about you know starting business here and and being a, a big part of this community. Um. And you've mentioned some things that make our town very special. Um. I I think that you share sentiments of of the same thing is that we really do have a cool, um, whether it's the downtown area or things go out that we're much different than, and I always say, and people from other towns that listen, they're like, okay, enough about how cool our town is. <laughs> but some of your favorite things about our town are, um, how small and like the, the when you say the country feel, to it's it. a community. It's, you know, it's a community feel and you can sense it in how people react to each other as compared to other towns where, you know, they're busy with their own life, but not really involved much with us, the community. And you see a lot, you know, when people walking down Center Street, it, it, even like somebody like Joyce Campbell, you know, wonderful Joyce was, and she always said how nice it was that people like greet each other, to, you know, with a handshake or to say hello. And, you know, sometimes people will move out of the way on the sidewalk to move as far as away from people as they can. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't seem to be that way here no. at all. You're right. Um, the last question that was on that, that I just sat down, um, was, uh, do you, can you think of a business that we need in town that we don't have? What, what, if there's a new business to come in town, what do you think that we need that we don't have here? Hmm. I find this one very interesting to see what people think. You can never have enough restaurants. Okay. But current restaurant owners would disagree with that one. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, it, for a long time, I felt the town needed more physicians. But now that we've got, let's say, North Shore and others that have their big facilities where, uh, what was the name of the restaurant? Country Square used yeah. to be. Yeah. Oh my I gosh. Mean, I mean, we've got all the physicians we need now. So that part, that part of it's good. Right. It's nice that it's there. It's funny you say Country Square because through all of these episodes that we did last, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about Pat's Pizza a lot. Um, um which no one knows. Oh. Right. Great pizza. That was like a staple of Grace Lake. Oh, yeah. I don't, uh, you know, I still am sad they closed because it was yeah. the best pizza around. Right. So you've got to see our town change quite a quite a bit since you're working with. For sure. Yeah. And even having your guys' office on Center Street, I'm sure just the, the face of everything has changed. And I, and I think for the better, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I always talk to, I always like talk about like old landmarks or, or, or things. Is there somewhere that in town that closed or, or changed that used to be maybe your favorite place that you wish we still had? Well, I guess you you brought it up, Pat's Pizza. I would go there. I swear I'd go there twice a week to eat. I mean, so yeah, that was, that was my favorite. And we'd have staff meetings there in the back room. Okay. I mean, yeah, we went there all the time. Yeah. I was, uh, I recently had a, a podcast with Dr. Griff too. Um, and Griff's crazy. Love him. Love him to death. He's crazy, but he was talking about like the nightlife of, of bars and places he used to go and none of them really exist anymore. Yeah. Except for Phil's Tavern, which is Charlie's now. Yeah. Um, so, but it's, yeah. but it's kind of cool to see. Um, in changing those things, you know, population from what, 1500, I, I, I've heard different numbers where we're at today in the 20,000s, right? Yeah. Um, so how long of a, of a wait do people have to come to see you? Can you handle the amount of patients that you that you have? Or are you turning people away? With the way we schedule, and again, this is part of my background in business, if you call today, we can see you today or tomorrow. Oh. We don't, we don't have a waiting list per se because that's not giving good service. All right. So. Seeking a haven for your soul? Look no further than Inner Haven Spiritual Development Center, where your spiritual journey is uniquely yours. Artisans, storytellers, healers, teachers, spiritual warriors. Find guidance, support, and a haven for your inner self. Inner Haven is your sanctuary for transformation and discovery. Step into Inner Haven's art gallery. A haven within a haven. Immerse yourself in a world of joy where art, repurposed treasures, and specialty gifts await. They're not kidding when they say almost everything in their space is for sale. Discover a constant flow of new creations, all crafted by local artists who pour their hearts into every piece. It's just not shopping. It's an experience. Accent your home and find the perfect gift for a loved one at Inner Haven Art Gallery. Your journey begins at Inner Haven, where every piece has a story and every soul finds its haven. Wow. Um, so you've been involved in, 
in helping these events happen for a very long time. So like, give me an idea and a, a time range of like, how long have you been supportive of the, when did you get into helping everybody? Because with the list I have, I mean, at some point you got to say no, <laughs> since you're involved in everything that you have. Well, I, one of the things I teach on in my business classes is delegation. You know, you can't do everything yourself. There's just not not enough hours in the day. So, actually, I I have three principles that I teach when I lecture. One is delegation. The second is technology. You have to embrace technology. And the third is systems. You have to develop systems to take advantage of those other two things. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Right. So delegation. That's Kelly. You know, basically, I've said to Kelly, anything that you think is beneficial to the community, we're in. And and I, I leave it to Kelly. That's awesome. And she's great. And I actually, yeah, I, I had the honor with, of DJing her daughter's wedding not so long ago. You know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that that's fantastic. And it's and it's nice to see. Because Kelly, she's they're from around here too, right? Oh, yeah. She, she was born and raised in Grace Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. See, that's great. And it's nice to have, like, I, not that I'm telling you it's wrong if you moved to Grace Lake, you know, uh, a little <laughs> while ago. But it's it's fun to see the people that here are, that are that are lifers, yes. so to say. Yeah, I just can't get out. I keep trying to escape, but it just keeps pulling me back in. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only thing it will cause me to ever leave is state of Illinois taxes, for Christ's sake. I mean, that's, but that's, that's something we can't control. That's a whole different podcast, gotta, too. Not, yeah, it's a whole different, <laughs> move to Wisconsin because, you know, and other than that, I love it here. Yeah. It's Everybody great. else is great. Now, do you, um, have other doctors in your office? Yes, I have, uh, we have a, a new doctor, not new. She's been with us now five and a half years. And that's Dr. Oya Katz. She actually came in as Dr. Riley was transitioning out. Okay. So there was a two year period, three year period where they were both there. Mm -hmm. And then as she learned the tools of running a business and so forth, he transitioned out. So he's no longer seeing patients, but interestingly, he still does treatment plans for our patients. The, the dental monitoring things. Yeah. Everything that's AI driven, that's kind of his bailiwick. So really? he does that from home, but never in the office. How cool is that? It's, it's great. It's you know, he, Don is an amazing guy. And what I like the most about him for all the decades we work together is his attention to detail. And that reflects itself in our finished results too. Right. So, and it must be hard to go into because you're, you're such a specialist in what you do and the passion that you have, what you do to actually partner with another doctor you must have a special relationship with them beforehand to to step into that and to be he was a student of mine that's how i picked him. no <laughs> way yeah really yes. yeah so because uh, and uh, probably a lot of people want to know that with the with the name change because i still say something so riley yeah because right? yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. embedded in our brains thank you very much um from helping everyone so um when did selkie and riley when did that become like you guys together what, well, Selkie and Riley became, began, I think Don joined me, I'm going to say 1980. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then how recently did he, he step back? He stepped back, it's going to be three years in January. Wow. But he's still, he's working, but not seeing patients. Right, you guys seem the same that I don't think you'll ever stop working. Yeah. You're always going to have your hand in something, yeah. right? You know, it's a reason to get up in the morning. A amen to that purpose. We always talk about purpose. Um so when you, was it hard to change names because of everybody knew? No, what caused the name change was, you know, we knew this transition was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we brought on Dr. Katz. And are we gonna, what are we going to say? Selkie, Riley, Katz. And then all of a sudden, Riley Sel disappears, Selkie, Katz. And then when Selkie disappears, and it's, we decided to change the name to Orthodontic Specialists of Lake County. So she came on board five years ago in August. And we changed the name then. Right. Just to make the transition better right. with less confusion. Otherwise, it sounds like a law firm. Yeah. I've been watching the show Suits, and they take names off the wall and put names on the wall. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's coming? But it's nice to know. And it and it generally covers everything um, that's on there, too. Yeah. Um, um, so I always try to keep an eye on our time because, man, you could go on a lot of different things. Um, but I have a um, another thing that you guys do. and I, Do you say it by an acronym? It's the O-S-O-L-C, CARE. And share campaign. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, do you s tell me about that? Okay. It, it's actually something that Kelly and and my office managers came up with. We're always looking for ways to give back. So this one they came up with 
And they actually started it without even telling me. So <laughs> the, the, the true story. What it is is this. Everybody who walks in the door gets a colored ball. And basically, they have three boxes to put the colored ball in. And it's their choice. One box is support of the veterans. Another box is support of dogs, you know, pets, right. and so forth. And the third one is support of, uh, you know, homeless people, you know, the food banks and so forth. So, right. you know, they can see, they can read about what are the three charities we're supporting. And they can throw their ball in any of those three boxes. And at the end of each month, we count balls right. and a dollar for each ball goes to that charity. That's great. And then how long have you guys been doing this? Actually, it's two months now. Two months now. Yeah, that's um, that's fantastic, and makes it and makes it fun that people get to. Oh yeah, you know what? I I want people to know that we give back, and this is a good way to at least plant the seed. We're more than just a a practice that straightens teeth. You know, we're we're concerned about the community too. Right, and also uh, by doing this, you inspire people to give back. I hope so. Yes, that is that is one of the reasons why I thought you know Kelly and others came up with a genius idea. They, they did. They're creative. You yeah. may have to work these girls harder because this, they, they got time to do this stuff. They, they need to be. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I go back and tell them that. I'll tell them that Dave said you need and to that, delegate better. They're, they're gonna, you're going to get hate mail, Dave. <laughs> hey, we haven't got any yet, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to the first day, the first the first letter. If it's from Kelly, I take it as an honor. I love yes. that. Silly Kelly, thank you. Um, but that's cool. And, you know, one thing we talk about on, on the show a lot is, how people get involved in Grace Lake, how to how to better our community, and you're a prime example of having your hand in everything. Because even if it's you just saying, it, whether it's just writing a check to help out, you know, the park district, or and, and I thank you because half of the DJ things I do are sponsored by you. So you're actually paying me to DJ at these events. So there we go. I, I appreciate that. Everyone wins. Right, but but businesses in town, maybe you're not maybe you're not involved um, in our community right now. But an, another way to say give back in some way or form to a to a local charity, to a community event, to anything, whether it's writing a check or if it's volunteering your time. Uh, once again, I urge everybody in the community to do that, even myself, just to get out and do something that, that makes everything better. Um, because every little bit helps. I think you'll agree. And, and you know what? You know, the, the, the old saying is, you know, God helps those who help themselves. And I think God rewards us for... I'm blessed, you know, I, I live well, I make a good living, and I love giving back, and I swear every time I give back, I get even more in return, you yeah. know, and it, even if it's just emotional feeling good about me, it's worth it, it's worth it. Amen to that. Yeah. Um, all right, we're getting close to the end here, so I want to make sure that I cover anything that, that you wanted to talk about, um, so um, I want to know where you grew up, though. I grew up in Des Plaines. In Des Plaines. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it's funny to see the progression of like, so you grew up in Des Plaines. Um, did your family stay in Des Plaines until you were in college? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then when you graduate college after 20 years of schooling or whatever it took you to do that, um, how do you decide where you're going to move? I know you said your practice was in Zion first. How do you yes. end up in Zion? Okay. I was actually teaching at University of Illinois Department of Orthodontics two years before graduation. I finished all my credits for graduation, and the dean said, you're, no one's ever gotten a degree early, and you're not going to either. Okay, so I became a full-time faculty. Okay. Interesting. And one of my students in ortho was trying to decide where to practice, and he was trying to decide between Dubuque, Iowa, and Zion. Okay. There's two choices for And you. he chose Dubuque, and he said, Terry, why don't you look at Zion? So I went and looked at Zion, and here's a town of, at that time, was 18,000 people. No orthodontist. I'm going, why is there an orthodontist here? Okay. Right. So I, I went to Zion. What I didn't know at the time is, at that day and age, the dental IQ of Zion was, if you had a toothache, take the tooth out. You know, if your teeth are crooked, take the teeth out and get a denture, you know, that kind of wow. thing. I mean, that was their dental IQ. They needed to, they needed as a community to learn that there's a better way. Right. You know, it's not like that anymore, but way back then, that's what Zion. And that's why I was struggling down there. Or, and that's why Al Stefano, when he called me, 
I was in shock because the quality of dentistry, the dental IQ of the community here was so different from Zion. Hmm. And that's why I closed the Zion office shortly after coming to Grace Lake. Wow. That's crazy. I, I love the story of coming here and, and how that changes everything and made some lifelong you know, friends along the way. That I can absolutely can see how much you love those guys. Um, so I want, because you've been a successful dentist, um, orthodontist, businessman, um, any words of advice for people out there, especially in, in times like this that are trying to follow their passion, their, their things that maybe things that you put in place that advice you could pass down to somebody that's really trying to get to where they want to be? I would say, you know, if you're talking about something that would be, let's say, a startup business or something like that, the biggest thing is you've got to control expenses, but the way to control expenses isn't to, let's say, cut expenses by cutting staff or not paying staff adequately and having the turnover that comes with that and not running on time and all those different things. So how do you make it work? Well, you invest in the community. And way back when, you know, I had payless paydays, but I would rather have invested in the business than take it home. And I've gotten my rewards tenfold. Right. It's a scary thing because you've taken some leaps and taken some chances in your life by closing that office, by coming here, by doing all that. So taking chances, I'm sure, but, you know, educated. Uh, yes. <laughs> and and, and that's that. where the, the business background helped, too. You know, right. and, and that's why I lecture internationally. I am an orthodontist. Everybody knows. And they know I lecture on business and how to run a successful orthodontic business. Right. You seem like you really enjoy the lecturing part. I do. Yeah. I do. I've lectured on six continents and really I, before COVID I was lecturing 25 weekends a year. Holy smokes. That's a lot. I, you know, Europe, Australia, South America, Asia, all over. Wow. You're, over. you're a world renowned orthodontist and I'm blessed. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, keep up the good work because that's awesome. Thanks. Imagine all these, um, because I know you have a teacher's, you know, obviously mentality and know how important it is to pass these things down to maybe things you've learned to people that want to be the best or the honest that they can possibly be. Yeah. Um, it's great. I love it. It's really cool. Um, well, we're going to wrap up anything you want Gray's Lake to know about you that maybe we don't, maybe we don't know. Not anything other than I'm going to keep doing what I've always done. You know, I, I, I want to surround myself with great people, uh, always looking for ways to improve. You know, one of the things my staff knows is a big principle of our office is Kaizen, continuous improvement. You know, that's a Japanese concept. And every time I go to a meeting, I come back with something that I'm going to change because I know it'll make us better. That's awesome. So constantly moving forward. Yes. <laughs> and everybody should take some advice from that, too. Yeah. Um, that's great. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks thank for you having for, me. Thank you for everything you do for our community, because you honestly, single-handedly, with, with your staff and everybody, that you have made our community better. And I tip my hat to you. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Grace Lake, thank you so much for listening. Um, do me a favor. No matter what pro, uh, what platform you're on, listen to your podcast, whether it's Apple, whether it's Spotify, whether it's even on YouTube, um, make sure to subscribe because I want to make sure that you get alerted every time that a new episode comes out. Um, and that way your phone will just pop up and it's going to be a new Grace Lake guest. And I encourage everybody out there to, like I, like I always say, and I'm sorry if I repeat myself too many times, um, but I really want you guys to listen to episodes of people that you don't know. Um, rather than the people you do know, because I believe that knowing more about our community, bringing everybody together uh, is an intricate part of moving our town forward and, and just the way and how awesome it is. So. And I think what you've come up with is, is a way for people to know the town is amazing. You know, and, thank you. and thank you for that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, Grace Lake, we will um, see you next Tuesday. Um, and once again, if there's a guest that you'd like to see on the show, don't be afraid to write in on somebody you'd like to hear. But everybody, uh, have a great day, and we'll see you around. Thank you, Doc. Thanks.